I spent the last few weeks putting together a really complete checklist, a very step-by-step -step checklist for starting a video production company completely from scratch. Even if you have an existing one, a lot of these in this checklist are going to be helpful to you. Now, I started my video production company back eight years ago or so, but I tried to start it way before that multiple times, but I kept making the same mistakes over and over again. The problem was, even though I went to film school, they didn't teach me anything about running my own company. The business side, the marketing side, everything that had to do with making money in the world of filmmaking was sort of left out for some reason. So I had to learn some of these the hard way. So even though I've been doing this outside of film school for 15 years, I only really considered the last eight years as the part where I was successful running a video production company. The times before that where I was freelancing and dabbling in running my own company is where I made all kinds of mistakes. I really hate that I had no sort of a roadmap or a mentor to help me along the way. So hopefully I could help you with things like this checklist to make you more successful in your video production and filmmaking career. And this is more or less the outline for the course that I'm putting together that is going to walk you through how to exactly start a video production company if you're a freelancer or if you're just dabbling with video and you want to really turn it into a career. So this is going to kind of give you that roadmap, but I'm not gonna go deep. It's still gonna be a little bit of a longer video because I just wanna give you a little bit of detail on each thing that I'm mentioning, but do add your name to that list if you wanna be notified about that course in detail. So let's go through this step by step again. I have this in seven steps that I'm gonna lay out here for you. But step one is where to start and how to start. And typically, the very first thing I tell people when they're trying to start their own video production or video business is, do you have the ability to produce a quality video? Meaning, do you personally have the skill to do pre-production, to help write a script maybe, to shoot and to edit a video? and to handle a client that you're gonna get down the road. Now, if you don't have the skills yourself, which I know a few people that I've worked with in the past, they don't do this themselves, but they know freelancers that they could outsource, and those freelancers could help them produce a quality video. But in most cases, if you're like me, I learned this stuff on my own, I freelanced for a while, then I started my own company, which made it a lot easier to grow a successful company because any time I could jump in and fill in. I knew how to do pre-production, I knew how to do production shoot, and I knew how to edit decently, I was a decent editor. But the thing is, if you don't know any of those things, what I recommend in this very first step of starting is create a list of names of people in the freelance world that could help you. Now again, I freelanced for a while, so I had personally worked with people and they were already on my contacts, right? Or I was Facebook friends with them throughout the years. Now, if you don't know anybody, what I recommend you do is create a post and create a list for yourself by doing phone interviews or Zoom interviews with people so you could actually call some people. Now, if you personally have the skills yourself, that's great, but I still recommend you spend maybe a couple of days trying to put a little bit of list together from who you've met in the industry so far or from just doing a little bit of research. Then within the same step of getting started, I also recommend you have a baseline of gear. Now, I always talk people out of buying more gear because this becomes a never ending battle of you constantly thinking more gear is gonna bring you more business. I stopped playing that game a long time ago. But in the beginning, you do need a set of essential gear. For example, you need a decent camera for a few thousand dollars, a decent lens, a tripod, maybe a basic sound and lighting kit. So you could go out and make a video if you had to do this all on your own. That's exactly what I did. I had the very basic essential kit. I'll try to put together a list of starter kits and a little bit more of an advanced kit to it that I'll try to link below once I put it together that will show you exactly a decent kit that you could use to get started. If you can't afford any type of gear, this can be rented out once you do get a client, but it's really difficult a lot of times to start without anything. I've tried to teach people this, but it's never really worked out because of the difficulty that it takes for you to outsource all the creation and all the gear on every single shoot, even your first shoot. So that's why I usually recommend this in this stage to save up, even through freelancing, to save up money, to have a decent set of starter gear 
So you could do your own shoots if you had to do your own shoots completely on your own. So just to recap this step, having the basic set of gear, having the basic set of knowledge on your own, or having a list of freelancers that could help you. I know a lot of shooters, for example, are really good at shooting, but they don't want to learn editing. That's a whole different skill set. So partnering or finding a good editor to help you with post-production on these things could be a really great first step. I started with having a list of editors because I really love shooting. I started as a cinematographer, so I really wanted to do the shoots myself, but I just didn't really care so much for the editing side. So I made cinematography and production my passion and then try to outsource a lot of the editing even early on. Now, step two is on the business side of things and is creating a company. And I'm gonna walk you through just step by step here on how exactly the things you need to know to create a company the right way. Now, every time I tried to start a video production company, I was very confused about what I need to do exactly and when I need to do it. A lot of times you just work on your own, you have your personal checking account and you run your business through that. And I promise you, not only do you not benefit in any way with business deduction that you could take benefits from, if you have a video production company, you also will have a hard time reversing some of the things that you're gonna do this way. I got in all kinds of trouble. I got in trouble with my taxes and had penalties with the IRS. I had all kinds of weird things that I had to hire different accountants for to fix later on. So I recommend you do this as soon as you can once you get things in place. So this is the few steps that you need to take to start a video production or really any small business. I always tell people to carve out, even if you have a full-time job, if you're freelancing full-time, no matter what you're doing throughout your week, I recommend you take five to 10 hours a week to figure out the business side of what I'm showing you here. Because if you don't get the business side, a lot of people that I talk to, they're like, oh, I'm gonna hire someone to handle the business. There is no such person. Every time I've seen people try to find that person, they've just waited to find that person. They've never actually taken the first step to starting their own company. So take the little bit of time that it takes to learn this stuff every, every week. This is going to be a long journey, but if you take yourself a five to 10 hours a week where you could learn this stuff, you're gonna be ahead. So I always tell people like, for example, I track my time in order to figure out where I could find free time. There's 168 hours every week, right? And typically, even if I spend eight hours a week, eight hours a day sleeping, there's still 112 hours a week where I'm awake. And that's plenty of time for me to find five to 10 hours to do this. So next in this process, you pick a company name. You should get yourself a mailing address that is not your home address. You could get this for pretty inexpensive. There's companies where you don't have to get a physical location but you could just get an address from them. So some of this takes a little bit of money to set up, but again, all these is what I would do if I was starting my production company right now. Even if I had no money, I would save up from freelancing and invest in some of these, these things. Then I always recommend you incorporate your company. Early on, I did this on my own. I had no lawyer and no accountant, and I spent thousands of dollars reversing some of the mistakes I made because I just didn't take the time to learn this stuff. So what I recommend is either get a lawyer or use a platform like LegalZoom to incorporate your business and talk to an accountant and a lawyer to figure out what's right for you. I'm telling you, just from doing this the right way, just understanding the difference between working under my own name or making an S corporation or an LLC, I took the time to research that stuff, figure out what's best. I'll make other videos about that stuff as well on this channel. And those help me set up things the right way. Again, I can't give you that kind of legal or accounting advice because really you should get a CPA and a lawyer to do that. But what I'm telling you is if you don't do this part, you could really lose out on a lot of savings as far as taxes and write-offs, and you're gonna have a lot of headache down the road. So again, this is one of those things that I take care of after naming my company, having a mailing address. Then I usually recommend you get something like QuickBooks to keep track of those numbers. Now I know most people hate this stuff and they don't wanna take the time to set up QuickBooks and things like that. But again, this was something that I learned in a five or 10 hours where I kind of set up my books. Then you could get a bookkeeper later on to um, organize things for you. But I remember when I started out, it was a mess. And every tax season I spend more money because I didn't have anything like that to have things 
be more streamlined to figure out my expenses and write-offs and things like that, then I would hire someone to design a logo for you or there is a platform called Placeit and I'll try to link that below as well. Placeit lets you make a logo by just kind of using machine learning and you just kind of tell it a name and it creates a logo for you and then you could just buy that one logo. You, you could just do that by a, via subscription. You don't have to pay someone. But if you could afford it, a better logo could set you up. I still only have like a $50 logo to this day. So it's not that big of a deal, but it is important that you have a logo. And then if you want to use networking, and if you're more old school, and I usually teach online marketing for getting clients, but if you're going to go to networking events and things like that, a business card is a good idea at this point. So I usually would spend like $50 to get a few hundred business cards at this point for any business. It doesn't hurt to have a business card, but it's not a huge deal. Then I would get a business line and I use Google Voice. Even I think to this day we use Google Voice because it's a free service and you could pick an area code and it will give you the number and anybody, including yourself, anybody on your team can receive calls at the same time on that number. So whoever picks up the phone first, for example, when we first started and it was two of us trying to pick up the phone, both of our phones rang, whoever picked up would answer the call, right? So that way, if I'm on a shoot, someone else is on a shoot, someone else is busy editing, someone's always answering the phone. So Google Voice is a great number, so you don't use your personal phone number here as your business number. And then make sure there's someone there to answer the phone. The biggest problem you'll have with growing a video production company is when you're busy on a shoot and you can't answer the phone and you lose out on a client. A lot of times clients will move quickly. Potential clients will pick someone, maybe sometimes the same day. And I've lost on so many different jobs because nobody answered the phone because we're busy. So if you could figure out how to answer the phone or try to get to people or back to people ASAP, you're gonna be ahead of most people. I literally, this is true with any profession that where the owner of the company goes and does the jobs. I was trying to hire a plumber the other day. Well, 10 different plumbers, only one of them picked up. Guess who I hired? The guy that picked up. The rest, I'm not saying we're plumbers, I'm just giving you an idea with service businesses. Sometimes if you just get to the phone, you could win and you should just give yourself every opportunity to win a job. All right, let's jump to step three and step three, is now the business stuff is out of the way, you've taken some time to figure things out. Step three is usually when I tell people to pick a niche. Now I'm gonna make another video to just give you a ton of different ideas on only not only niches, but genres of videos you could make, the type of clients you could work with. From my experience, what has paid the most and what I recommend you try out as well. But when you pick a niche, basically, I want you to pick an industry that you're going to service and help out. And by industry, I mean, if you're going after just music videos, that's the industry, you're helping artists, right? If you're going after a more profitable thing like B2B, business to business type of videos, you're going to go after that. But by niching down, I mean, within whatever type of uh, thing you wanna go after, niche down even more. So if your niche is B2B commercials, which is what I do, corporate and commercial work, even within that, I will figure out, okay, do I want to help lawyers? Do I want to help non-for-profits that have the budget? Maybe non-for-profits uh, that are making anywhere from one to 10 million a year. I really recommend you take the time to learn about picking a niche and pick an industry that could actually be profitable. Again, this is a whole thing that I discuss further in my course, but I just wanna give you an idea here of what that is because if you don't do this, and you just take any job that comes your way, you're going to be extremely frustrated down the road. This is the, this is the thing that almost burned me out when I was doing this for a few years because I really didn't understand that if you don't have a niche, your message just goes out there really and it's to no one. No one is hearing you if you don't talk to a specific pe person. So picking a niche is very critical and then within, once you figure that out, I recommend you find your ideal client. If, for example, if you're doing B2B commercial work, what size of a company you wanna service? And I learned this by just researching this stuff all the time and figuring out, well, how do I figure out what a revenue of a company is? 
Okay, because at this point, a lot of people, yes, you, we love to have Coca-Cola or some major corporations like uh, Fortune 500 corporation as a client. That's just not going to happen early on. We need to find a, a corporation that could afford our service, but at the same time be small enough that we could get them. I need you to figure out this kind of stuff, which again, I go over in detail in, in the course, but uh, finding ideal customers is a thing that you should spend some time figuring out. And then once you have these things, you need to make yourself a decent looking website. Now, I mentioned all these things before that because now you know who you're talking to when you're making a website. Your website is not just random website, right? You're making it uh, a very customized website based on the type of client you want to talk to. Now, a lot of people maybe look at my company and see the website is very generic, but I've gone past this stuff way before, right? I've now grown where I could service multiple different niches in multiple different industries from corporate and commercial to travel and hospitality. And even we do a lot of tech stuff now, but I did not start with just all kinds of random stuff like that. It was very focused. So making a website, you could do all kinds of different research on that, but you could use Wix, Squarespace, pretty straightforward. I recommend you do this yourself, at least as an uh, initial website. So you don't invest too much here because it's now become a lot easier. I literally had to learn code HTML and CSS and JavaScript back in the day in 2008, I think I was making a website in a software called Dreamweaver. You don't have to do any of that. A lot of these are much more simpler. Then you need to, on that website, put together some example of your work. This is called a demo reel or your portfolio. So I recommend you do that. If you don't have a good, good portfolio, you need to go shoot some stuff. Okay, so I recommend you usually get someone that would allow you to go shoot at their business or whatever type. If you're doing weddings, for example, you should shoot a free wedding because it's so hard to get a wedding if you've never shot a wedding before or do a very discounted wedding just to have something to show as a portfolio. Then you need to secure all your social media handles. So based on your company name, I will get my social media handles and don't spend so much time trying to figure out what to post on Instagram. Nobody cares about your first posts. I would just make it look like something that you're using so it just looks like you have a presence on your social media or don't post at all. Just secure the handles on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Just get the handles so nobody else takes them after you set up your business. And then I would make a LinkedIn page, a personal one and a business one. Again, so nobody takes those, but I would spend some time because some clients will look at your LinkedIn profile. I don't spend much time on it myself, but early on, I remember a lot of people were looking that stuff up when I was really pushing that. And you want to, for organic content, choose one platform. You've secured all of them, but choose one, okay? And post organic content to that one. You don't want to spend your time just making a bunch of content and thinking people are going to find you on Instagram and hire you. But having a presence when people find you through the other methods I'm going to teach you, it's going to be nice where you have a nice presence online. Okay, so that's step three in a nutshell. I know I'm throwing a million things at you, but this is a blueprint. I'm not giving you a very detailed step by step in each step, but I just want to kind of give you the big blueprint again, because I just never had a resource that taught me, hey, what's the first step? What's the second step? So I was just doing random things all the time for years and getting nowhere. So hopefully this is helpful. I'll try to put this as a checklist too in the description below. So hopefully the checklist could help you as you watch this video with a little bit more detail. Now we've kind of set up our company. We have a website, we have a demo. And again, if you don't have any of those, this you could refer back to this checklist and video all the time to make sure you hit all these points. And if you disagree with the point, ignore it. You don't have to do every single thing. This is based on my personal experience on exactly how I grew a video production company. And step four, you need to create what's called an offer. So you're a service provider. You're providing a video service for somebody. Now, if you're doing a wedding business, you're providing it to consumers that are getting married. If you're creating commercials, you're providing that to different businesses. But depending on what you're doing, you need to create a very clear offer. And an offer basically is what is it that you're providing to a customer? When I first started, a very clear offer was at that time, people needed a video for their website 
And this was a marketing video. They needed to tell people that landed on their website through video what they did. Very straightforward product, right? So my offer was, I could make that video for you, a three minute marketing video that we will fully produce. And that became our very first offer. And I, my niche was law firms at that time. And through that, I stepped up in the law firm. Later, it became more healthcare and travel. And I really don't do law firms anymore, but it's a starting point. So you don't, you don't have to think your life is gonna be working with lawyers forever. You just need a starting point. That becomes your offer. Then you need to have an example of that offer because you need to be able to show someone else what they're gonna get in return. So the very first time I wanted to work with law firms, I did a video for free for a law firm that was a friend of mine. Because of that video, I was able to get bigger and bigger clients in the uh, law firm world. Then you need to create yourself what's called a landing page. So your homepage on the website could be a little bit more generic, but a landing page has to pitch a very specific offer. Okay, so what a landing page does, for example, I have a landing page for talking about the course that I'm making here. I have a landing page for any businesses or any product that I'm going to sell for anything. With a landing page, you have a very clear offer. So in that landing page, it would be the type of videos that you're going to make. In this case, the offer for the law firm I had, landing page example of the video, no price. I had a price at first, but I took that off. I'm gonna explain how to do sales in a second. Now, once you have the landing page, I typically tell people to create some sort of pricing model that makes sense for them. I have a different video here that shows you how I would price a $5,000 video, and it goes more in detail about that as far as pricing goes. But typically, I usually have value-based pricing. Sometimes, for example, Imagine someone hired you to make a three minute marketing video for them. Well, I always think about, well, if I'm making a three minute marketing video and I price that based on the competition out there, a lot of people that I've seen, you know, they think maybe that's worth 500 bucks. Maybe that's worth 1500 bucks. Maybe I think it's worth 5,000, but we still are really not offering or pricing this based on value. So a way you could add value to this is, let's say you're making that three minute marketing video but can you make six different pieces of content out of that? Maybe a vertical Instagram Reels ad or some kind of an ad that they could run just on YouTube or Facebook just from that initial video you made for their website. Now you're giving them a ton of value for what's really not taking you more time, right? You could still shoot that within one day, maybe adds a little bit to editing, but that's maybe two, three hours, right? To maybe resize those and chop those up a little bit. But you're now in the client side, just offer them six times more value because now they're getting six, six videos. So I have a ton of different value propositions that I think about and I discuss with clients when I'm pitching, which we'll talk about in a second. But in the creating the pricing model, I think of all those ideas. If I was to increase my price by three times, what do I need to deliver for that to be worth it? I can't just increase my price by three times because if I did, I would lose out to the competition, right? But if I did increase my price, can I deliver value that matches or exceeds that? So again, I talk about that in the other video in more detail. All right, let's jump into step five. And step five is all about getting clients. Everything we've done to this point is to set things up so we could actually go out there and market our business and get clients. So how do we get clients? Well. This is basic marketing and advertising that I'm gonna cover, which for some reason, most people in uh, filmmaking just decide to ignore. And I understand that 100%. We are filmmakers, we are artists, we don't care about these type of things, right? We want someone else to jump in and get us clients. Every time I've seen that, people got completely ripped off when they try to hire a salesperson to sell what they know to sell what they're passionate about. If someone's really good and they could come in and sell some kind of a video service for you, it's going to be very hard to convince them as a one person or starting out. They're just not gonna do it if they're any good at it. If they're not good at it, they might do it and you will lose money. I've seen it many, many, many times. So again, what I recommend here is basic marketing and sales and for you to take a little bit of time to learn it. I hated every second of this and I'm so glad that I, stuck with it and I was again able to really excel going from a freelancer making 50,000 a year 
to making 250K in profit in a video production company the next year, just because I learned this stuff a little bit at a time. So what should you do to get clients? The very first thing I teach people is to pick an ad platform. And you could run ads for your company and for your service and for your offer. And really nowadays, you have Facebook and Instagram, which is the same ad platform, they're the same company. And you have Google and YouTube, which again is the same ad platform because they're the same company. So there's really two big ad platforms nowadays. If you learn one of them, that is what I would do to run ads. If I was starting brand new, after doing all those things, I would learn one of those two. Literally, I just seen courses that are out there about this kind of stuff for 20 bucks on Udemy, for example, that gives you the basic structure. Now, I dive much deeper into these things, but if you understand the basic structure of Google AdWords, for example, where you could uh, service people or where you could show up in search, in Google search based on keywords, or you use Facebook ads and learn exactly how that works. If you learn that, just the basics of it, you are, again, going to be ahead of 90% of people that are in this profession because they are just not going to take the time to do it. Then, once you figure that out, again, this may take a couple of weeks. This whole process is not something that could happen overnight. You're making a successful business from scratch. There are many steps involved and they are going to take time. But you run your first ad because you're trying to drive traffic to that landing page that has that offer to that specific audience. This all ties back into that step. But once you run your ad, it will drive leads. And there's a ton of ways. For example, Facebook has just a lead generation where people could talk to you on Messenger. So once you set that up, you need to have the time to take those calls and schedule those calls via that lead generation. Now the ad process is one that does take a little bit of money. But again, it's hard to market a business without any type of advertising budget. You could do it through word of mouth, but again, this could take many years. With ads, you could literally work the next day because if you spend enough, you are going to get leads if everything else is set up based on what I explained. But when you schedule that call with that lead, that sells. So marketing and advertising, marketing is a bigger umbrella and advertising is within that. But when you run those ads, people are going to set up the call. You get on the call. You tell them more about the offer they just saw. This is the best way to tell people how much things are if you are going to give them value-based pricing. I used to lay it down on the website and the conversion rate, meaning the conversion of people that set up that call to the people that became clients was much lower than when I explained that to them on the phone. You just have to be passionate about it and believe in the product that you are creating and if you're good enough and you believe in that, this part you will get used to after a few phone calls. At first it's very scary and I was stuttering all the time. I couldn't do any of these sales calls, but it becomes much, much easier. And then yes, maybe down the road you can get someone to help you with this if you really hate this. But I've never seen anybody do this successfully if they didn't try it on their own first. Then your goal here is to close that sale over the phone and basically turn that lead on that call into your clients or customer. Okay, that's step five of getting clients. So again, I run an ad to the landing page I created, pitching a specific offer to that specific person through targeting of the ad, right? You could literally target just lawyers with Facebook ads, for example. They become a lead, you get on the call, you close that sale on that call. Again, if you hate doing it, eventually you could get someone to do it for you, but I recommend at least you give it a try and you try to close that sale. No one's gonna do it better than you, even though I know most people think they're gonna be horrible at it. I thought the same thing, but I still close more sales than most people I try to do sales for me. All right, step six. Now you got yourself clients, everything is set up in autopilot, but now you actually have to fulfill the job, right? That's why I always start, start with step one, which is, do you know how to make a good quality video or do you have resources that could help you produce a good quality video? If you don't and you did all the other steps, you get to fulfillment and you panic. I've panicked before when I took jobs that were far beyond what I was capable of and it's a nightmare type of life where every time you have to figure out oh, how do I do this job now? How do I fulfill this? It's going to be a lot easier if you already know to some extent, every job is gonna push you to a, to a different level, but at, to some extent you should know 
what it takes now to deliver that video. So I usually systemize my video creation process. What's the first step? From the moment the lead, when the ad is running, when the lead comes in, who is gonna take care of that call? How is that call going to go? What's the script for that call typically? Then what happens when they become a client? What's the first step? What's the second step? This process, when I do this actually, this is where I had my first contract. So I always recommend people to work on a very basic two-page contract, which again, I, I delivered through, the, through my course that uh, from what, what my lawyer put together for me. But these things do cost money because you do have to have some kind of a knowledge of what should be in a contract. And a lot of times Googling it is not gonna be very beneficial for you to get the right type of contract. Systemizing the video creation process and the first step of that is giving the client the contract once they agreed. You should give them the scope of work. Scope of work tells the client exactly what they're gonna get and when they're gonna get it with deadlines. And the scope changes sometimes and you need to charge more when that changes. If you don't have a scope of work, like how many revisions for editing, how many days for shooting, what's the deliverables? If they don't know that and you just verbally talked about it, it's going to be a disaster and it's a never ending disaster because they're gonna just take advantage of you most of the time unwillingly. They're, they're not trying to take advantage. It just happens because there's no scope of work. So I usually have a contract and a scope of work statement to basically tell clients what they're gonna get and the contract is kind of a legally binding document. Then I work on delivering more than what they bargain for once they're in the system, right? Once they're in, we're going to do pre-production. I'm gonna tell the clients what we're going to do. Maybe I give them a call sheet if they're gonna be on a shoot. All kinds of different stuff that goes in the production side of things. And then I really, a lot of times, focus to make sure there's no scope creep. That's called client management. You just gotta manage their expectation and deliver more than what they bargained for, but you can't just forever be working with a client. If you don't set up, for example, a revision on edits, I've done jobs, I'm not joking, I've done a job where we did 16 rounds of revision for a three minute video because some engineer didn't like what this product, the side, this side looked like and this director of marketing didn't like this and a hundred different people seemed like they chimed in every other week and it was like six months. And I just thought I would lose that client if I brought up this kind of a scope creep, what it's called, when the project scope just gets bigger and bigger. So I lost a ton of money because I was just afraid to charge accordingly. So if you do this ahead of time, none of this becomes an issue and client management becomes a big part of this. That's why I'm teaching the video production company side of things because this could become a full-time job at some point, just managing client or accounts. Then you're going to deliver an experience for the client that they're really gonna be impressed with because the goal of this system is not to constantly work on getting new clients. The goal is to get repeating clients. At this point, I rarely need to go and get new clients because our repeat clients gets us where we want to be and then the new clients helps us grow where how fast we want to grow. This is kind of a system that you could turn on and off as you need to, depending on the lifestyle you wanna have. If you always wanna work, keep the system going, get new clients, turn them into repeating clients and keep growing and hiring. I don't really wanna have that life, so I sort of slowed things down and now it's all about that client experience, that personal management I do with clients to make sure they're happy with everything they're getting. And once you get a repeating client, sometimes you'll have a, cl a repeating client that could become a six-figure client. Really, it could pay all your bills just with th that one client. Now, I never recommend you stick with just one client. That becomes kind of a job and it's kind of pointless to run a company that way. But you get the idea. You could really give a client experience that lets them become repeating clients. When I started eight years ago, three or four clients I got that year are my clients to this day. And they never, in any single year, gave me any less work. It was always more work and more work and more work. And now we take care of a lot of things for those clients, right? So when you get those type of clients, it makes life a lot easier. You don't have to always be running ads and relying on ads and sales and things like that. Even though that does help to scale, you can breathe a little bit easier. And number seven is all about getting more help. This is the scaling section of this checklist. So if you try to do this on your own, everything I've mentioned so far, 
it's either going to take you a very long time or it's going to add a lot of frustration to your play. If you're busy shooting and editing all the time, who is going to take those sales calls? Who is going to take the time to make sure the business is run correctly? Who is going to take the time to make those landing pages, improve those landing pages, do marketing? This is literally a job of many, many people. That's why I'm teaching you the fundamentals that you need to know. So you basically know the first step in all these things. But as soon as you get to a point where you're making okay money, it's much better to reinvest that money to hire help rather than to buy more gear. So what I recommend for scaling is first bring on someone that could help you take things off your plate that you're doing. If you're doing all the production yourself, maybe you could outsource the editing first with a freelancer. Then maybe you could get people to actually do the shoot a little bit. I hate not ever going on shoots, so I still to this day go on shoots when I can, but not always because I know I now have trusted cinematographers and gaffers and editors. They could take care of any elements. Even a producer could take the entire job off my hand and I don't even have to think about it. Right now we're working with a client that I've never talked to before outside of the sales call and they've been our client for three years. So you could get to that point and it's a great place to be because now you have a real business that doesn't 100% rely on you. So th those are the things that I recommend in the scaling is figuring out a strategy to hiring. Again, you could just hire freelancers too. It doesn't have to be someone full time. I know that's a big stress. And then you need to treat every client you get, no matter the size, as if they're your only client. Once you do that in the scaling process, they will just trust you with bigger and bigger projects. Some of the biggest projects I got to this, uh, to this day came from clients I've had for a long time. They just trusted me with more and more. No one came and dropped a $200,000 job on my <laughs> plate when I was starting out, right? Maybe you started with a $5,000 job. Maybe they trust you with the bigger campaign after that. And then I would expand to different niches as you grow. Now, this is for much later, but when you scale and you really focus, let's say you started like me and you focused on law firms. Where through that law firm, I met someone in healthcare. Through that healthcare, even though it wasn't related to law firms, it still was a very similar product that I needed to make. And then I grew from there with that. So if you can niche up from what the niche you picked, your focus, you could kind of grow this business exponentially bigger. I don't recommend this till much later though. Niche down focus is probably a huge market right there that you're focused on and see if you can make a big impact in that market. You could then also expand to doing business in other states and other countries as well. Now we basically will take a job from anywhere because it's easy to travel to that job if the budget is right. Now there's a whole lot more to scaling that I'm not gonna cover. There's email campaigns and nurturing leads to eventually turn them into clients, all kinds of different things. But for the most part, this seven step process is exactly what I would do right now if I lost everything I had and I had to start from scratch. I would do it exactly in that order. Even starting as a freelancer or doing this on the weekend with weddings and events if I had a full-time job and then walk, work myself down the list one step at a time. I literally gave you many, many years of things that you can do to eventually scale a video production company in just one video. So I know I covered way too much. I typically try to make videos that are more tactical on one step, but this was the ultimate roadmap that I thought you could benefit from and you could repeat or come back to to make sure you didn't miss anything or to learn a little bit more about each step. Again, download the checklist below, try to do as much of it as you can over the next year or so and see where you are. And hopefully that could accelerate your process here with having a checklist. And also if you wanna be part of that course where I basically break these down in far more detail than I could cover here in one video. So in that course, I'm gonna cover all these things and a lot more that I didn't have time to mention in this, including all the business and marketing and getting clients, pricing and scaling, and a lot of the contracting and things like that. So hopefully you found this beneficial. I do post these type of videos on here twice a week, and I will hopefully catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching this one.